Hi everyone, welcome back. In previous video, we have implemented add M5 feature, and in this video, we're gonna implement update M5 feature. All right. So this is our user interface, and here we have added add employee button to add a new employee. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna add a new employee here. Let's call it as Sanju and power Sanju at the red gmail.com save employee button and then look at here sanju employees added to the employee list so this feature we have implemented in previous video in this video we're going to implement update employee feature so basically we add one more column over here and we add a update employee button correspond to each employee okay great so first we need to change a backend part and then we'll move to the front end part so first let us verify what are the changes required at a backend and then we'll move to the front end so let's begin with the repository at the repository we no need to change anything because gp repository exposes screwed database operations and let's see in a employee service so here basically we need to add a get employee by id method to retrieve our employee and this employee basically we pre-populated on our web page for editing right so let's go and let's create a method here let's call it as get employee by id and let's pass long id here and let's implement this method in an employee service i employee class okay this is the optional so find by id basically returns an optional object so here we need to get optional here employee repository dot find by id here we need to pass the id okay and here what we will do we will declare an employee object okay and what we will do we will get a employee from the optional optional provides uh, is present method so if it is present then what we will do is simply uh, get uh, employee from the optional optional dot get if it is not present then what we'll do we'll simply throw the exception throw new runtime exception let's call it as let's give a user defined message here employee now not found not found for id let's mention id here and simply return the employee all right great now we have created a get employee by id method and this method we will call from the controller okay now what we will do we will add a button to the index.html page so look at here the UI. We have three columns, right? Employee first name, employee last name, employee email. Okay, and what we'll do? We'll add one more column. Let us say actions. And here we'll add a update button. Let me quickly write the code here. So here we have given a hyperlink so this is the link basically once we click on update button then this will navigate to the show form for update method handler so we will provide a method handler for this link and look at here we are just retrieving a employee id and basically this employee id will be plugged in this id okay so this is the syntax for getting a binding id in timelip and this is the bootstrap css class okay now save it and go to the browser again and refresh so look at here update button is added okay now what we will do we will add a method handler in controller to handle this request open employee controller 
over here we're gonna write a method handler to handle you know uh, uh, this request show form for update request okay so let's create a method public string and let's give a method name as show form for update and let's annotate this method with at the rate get mapping annotation and this is the request right and what we will do we will get a path variable so this is basically id that uh, we bind here okay so basically this employee id is replaced here and this id will be available in here and to bind this id what we will do we will use at the rate path variable annotation so this id will be bind to the this parameter okay uh, one more thing is we need to get a model so we basically add a data to the model and then we we pass this model to the template so let me write the comment here get employee from the service the employee the employee equals to the employee service and then call get employee by id call pass the id here and what we will do we will simply so here we set a employee object to a model to pre-populate the form data okay so here call the model dot add attribute and then here employee and pass employee object to the add attribute as a value here and then here we simply return update underscore employee all right so this is the view that we are returning okay great so we basically created a method handler to handle show form for update request and next step is we need to create update underscore employee timelip template and then this employee object will be free populated in this form so let's go ahead and let's create a html page let's name it as update underscore employee dot html so basically this is a timelip template now here what we'll do we'll design update employee page all right so one more important thing here is you can also use new underscore employee dot html page so you can use a single page to handle save employee and update employee features okay but for simplicity i am going to create a new html page over here for updating employee so so that uh, you know uh, we can simplify this one so you can also create a single page this will handle both save employee and update employee feature so what you need to do here is you need to just add a hidden input field which will pass id to the controller and uh, that's it okay so it's almost similar so what i will do i will just copy this code from the new underscore employee.html page and i will add to the update underscore employee.html page over here so i will just make some changes instead of save i will say update employee okay it's gonna almost similar so just remove the placeholder let's call it as update employee okay so look at here this is the form and this is at symbol it basically represents to the call you know the uh, context path of our application and this is the save employee so this request basically handled in a controller so look at here we are using existing save employee method handler which we have implemented in previous video and then this is the employee object so this object basically we get from the uh, here okay from the controller uh, here okay model dot attribute and next 
so look at here this is the important so this is the syntax to refer to the property of the employee object so basically remember uh, when this page loaded first time then they will call a uh, getters method okay and then by using getters method they will populate the data uh, in a input field okay so this is very important so remember whenever the first time this page will loaded then this will call a getter method to get a data and that will be pre-populated on each input field okay understood it's pretty simple nothing fancy yeah, and it's similar to new employee uh, here we need to just add a hidden field over here let me quickly add here okay nothing fancy and look at here uh, this uh, actually shows undefined attribute name so to avoid this warning we just add a time lip link over here inside a html element okay great now what we do we will test this update and fly feature so one more thing is we haven't added bootstrap css file over here so let's copy this as you know bootstrap css file from the and here just paste it inside a header and let's also change the title and let's call it as employee management system so this is our application name right now let's go to the browser so from browser refresh it now what we'll do we'll update our employee so let's employ this uh, let's update this employee sanju power hit update and then i will say from sanju to i will call it as sanjay Sanjay123 and Pawar123 and Sanju123 at the rate gmail.com hit update employee so look at here the employee is successfully updated okay so let's go and let's update one more employee uh, let's update this one Ramesh SS so let's remove this Ramesh and let's say Ram and let's also change the email id uh, hit update employee so look at here this employee is updated Alright, so we have successfully implemented update and fly feature. Alright, let's recap the steps what we have done. So first step we have done is we have added get employee by id method inside our employee service interface and then we have implemented the same in employee service IMPL. Okay, this is the first step. Second step we have added update button inside a index.html page. Okay, so update button has show form for update request right so to handle this request we have created a method handler inside employee controller all right so this is the third step and fourth step is we have created update underscore employee time lip template and this time lip template has a form that is update employee form okay and it's a pretty simple form and this is action and this is object and we are passing the hidden field which will give the id and then first name last name email and then employee update employee button it's pretty simple uh, you know update employee html page so only four steps you require first step we have done a changes in employee service and then we have added a button inside index.html and then we have created a method handler okay and then we have created an update employee html page and we are we have used the existing save employee uh, you know uh, method to update the employee and finally in, from the save update we have redirected to the list it's pretty simple update employee feature i hope you understood in the next video we'll see how to implement delete employee feature Alright, see you in the next video.